Good afternoon, uh, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, CFS, College of Foundation Studies. <coughs> uh, we, we brought it out to make it a first year experience at USP. Simply because all the curriculum, the teaching strategies, the policies, and the regulations that is used at the College of Foundation Studies are all USP. So the experiences that they um, take, they undertake at foundation and preliminary level are USP um, uh, experience. So that's why we feel it's important to focus on foundation and preliminary as, as the first year experience at the university. Uh, this is an academic uh, little section at USP and we offer our programs at foundation and preliminary level. Foundation level is, is the equivalent of Form 7 and Year 13. Preliminary studies is the equivalent of Form 6 and Year 12 in the region. I'll touch a bit on the establishment. The foundation and preliminary programs are not new. It didn't come with CFS. It came with USP in the 1970s. Father Fonato would uh, testify to that. Uh, but when we started in the 1970s, uh, it was all within the schools, like within the faculties. They were running what was called P1 and P2. P1 was preliminary 1, P2 was preliminary 2, which was the equivalent of the foundation. And this was put up because at secondary level throughout the region at that time, there were no form seven. So all the secondary schools were either only up to Form 5 or Form 6. So those from Kiribati during this time, they were only up to Form 5, they had to come here, they had to come here and do P1. Fortunately, we from the Kingdom already had a Form 6, so we came here and did P2. So, so it was already started with USP, nothing new. So in 1999, uh, after years of discussion within the Senate, <coughs> There was a, a feeling that uh, there was too much in the schools to handle this primary school, secondary school issue. So they need to bring it out of the schools, put it in a little special unit, uh, get some qualified teachers who are qualified at that secondary level to focus on the preparation of students. So in 1999, it was pulled out with a lot of resentment and mixed feelings from the schools but Senate decided that they would pull this out, put it in a little unit that, is, that was called pre-degree studies unit, and they were responsible for preparing students for degree level studies, and this was called preliminary and foundation. 2006, uh, we, we needed a, a fancy name, so the university gave us the College of Foundation Studies, and again we were still delivering a preliminary and foundation. The mission we were given, to adequately prepare students for USP degree studies. USP. It wasn't meant for any other century or any other university but USP. So we started off like that, uh, trying to align our programs to the schools and to the faculties now so that we can prepare students for degree studies. In our observation, what, what we feel at this level, that the preparation was supposed to be a holistic preparation. It's not only academic, it was more social. Because these students who come here after foundation are students from the regional campuses. Coming to Fiji is like coming to uh, Alaska or California. So with that shock and social uh, adaptation to the situation here in Suva is one of the, the most challenging preparations that we've been trying to do. So to adequately prepare students for USP studies was the mission that we were given. The programs and delivery. I, I tried to fit in the programs uh, to the uh, uh, structure of the faculties so that we can see it and understand it better. For Faculty of Science, Technology and Environment, we have uh, courses in maths, computing, information system, biology, chemistry, physics and geography. We have got 13 courses in foundation and 11 courses at preliminary. With faculty of arts and law, we've got history, sociology, technology, and the languages. And faculty of, sorry, of business, economics, and government, we've got politics, 
accounting, economics and agriculture. So altogether we have 47 courses that are offered from the College of Foundation Studies. The delivery, all the courses at foundation level are blended courses. Some people call it hybrid, some people call it multimodal, but it's all the same thing. Uh, 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 methods of delivery, uh, firstly it's all print based, then we have face-to-face -face delivery, we've got audio and video delivery, and now all the courses at foundation have a component on online. So uh, that's uh, the delivery that we are doing now. I just want to bring this up to show you the, the, the extent of the distribution of our students. <clears throat> we have got them all covered in the, um, the USP member countries. You would notice that I put Hawaii there on top because Kiribati, we've got students in all the islands of Kiribati including Christmas Island. And Christmas Island is closer to Hawaii than to Tarawa. So that's the spread of the students that CFS is looking after. Marshall Islands, we've got it in Ibai and also Majuro. Solomon Islands, the, the northernmost um, island is Gizo, right down to Guadalcanal in the Solomons. In Tuvalu, we've got students in seven of the islands there. Tokelau, it's got three atolls, we've got all our students in the three atolls. Western Samoa, we've got Upolu and Sawai, we've got students in both uh, islands. Vanuatu, right down to Tana and up to Malekula, we've got students throughout. And, and it's interesting because it's not that simple. Like you can have one island like Pentecost, that if you go from the south to the north, you've got to get different planes. The plane that goes from Vila to Pentecost, doesn't go to the north in Pentecost. You have to go back to Vila to get another plane to go to the top. <laughs> and in these planes, believe it or not, you travel together with the pigs and, and agricultural crops and everything. So that's how we go out to the countries. In Fiji, we've got students up to Kandalu throughout the, uh, the islands in Fiji. Uh, in Tonga, we've got it all from uh, Tongatapu up to the newest. In all the islands, we've got students. Niue, we've got students in Niue. Cook Islands, we've got students also around the, uh, the islands of Cook Islands. So that's the distribution of our students that we look after. Enrollments, I think this is one of the important things. Uh, the lining rate is the foundation enrollment, and the other one is the preliminary. You would notice that the enrollment in preliminary continue to grow. Uh, there's fluctuation in uh, foundation for some reasons. Our highest is 2006. That's when we were in Statham. And then we were pushed out to the wilderness, so our enrollment sort of came down. And this year, 2010, we have had 7% increase. So we would notice that it goes up again. Uh, that's the total enrollments of uh, uh, preliminary plus uh, foundation. And again, 2010, there was a big influx of students. Student cohorts, this is, uh, should be interesting. Um, we have, in the greens, we've got the school leavers. We've got students from Form 5. They come in to do preliminary. We've got students from Form 6 to Foundation. And then we have students, failures in Form 7, who also come in. And what we do with these guys, we put them in the uh, bridging program. It doesn't mean they fail. We've got our admission uh, platform, which is 250 marks out of 400. So those below 250, we bring them in as failures. We see what subjects they were doing poorly in. We bridge them up to allow them to pick up their grades for degree studies. We also have mature students. Most of the students in uh, Melanesia, um, that is um, Vanuatu and Solomons, they drop out in Form 3 and Form 4. The intake for most of their uh, teachers' college are from Form 4. So we have a lot of students from these islands uh, coming in as mature students. They drop out, they work, now they find they need to formalize their qualification, they come back. And we put them in the uh, admission for mature students. We also have school base. It took us a lot of time to persuade council to agree 
and also the ministries of education throughout the region to accept us of to offer our program at, in the schools throughout the region. So now we've got 44 schools in the region doing our program. Uh, we have a special program with language. Um, now USP is trying to respond to the needs of Vanuatu and you may understand that Vanuatu is a, a dual language country. So we've been dealing with the Anglophone. Now the Francophone, the ministry wanted us to allow the Francophone schools to offer a preliminary course in English uh, for academic studies and also uh, for year 13 to do our uh, communication and study skills. We ran that for two years and found that the failure rate was very high. So we went back to dialogue and discussion and they wanted us to develop a remedial language. So now all the Francophone schools in Vanuatu are doing the remedial at year 11 and after that they will do LRP 13 at year 12 and then year 13 LF 11. So we have found that this progressive uh, uh, program that we have made for Francophone students, the, the result of their performance has improved. Um, so those are the cohort of students that we take in. Student retention. I thought this is important because this is one of our challenges. Uh, the ones in uh, yellow, I hope it is yellow. On the, yeah. the ones in blue are the enrollment per year. The ones in yellow are the students that we are able to retain. And the dropouts I included in this presentation, adding the non-starters and the EXs. You know, there are worse students who register but they never submit anything, they, don't, they did not start at all. And then we have students who left during the, the, the semester and don't even um, sit the exam. So our retention um, rate is that. Uh, 2010, we haven't been able to figure out our retention rate. Student performance, the pass rate, we are still under 80. Uh, last year we, <coughs> we focused and uh, had our call targeted on 70%. Last year that was achieved. Uh, this year we're trying to get it up to 80, uh, but I'm looking at accounting. Uh, and uh, we are not sure yet if we're gonna hit that or not. But we put target to make sure that the teaching staff and the students work towards that. Uh, what CFS is good at? We think we are good in curriculum, <laughs> writing. But with curriculum, we are highly aligned to the faculties now. The process is that any revision, any design, the faculties or the schools would have to approve. So that's the process we are using now. And I, I remember uh, uh, Dr. Kishore mentioning in his presentation about the secondary schools, and I said to him, don't go there, that's too far. You have no control. You have your discretion with us. Do what you want to do with our academic program because we are here to prepare students for you. And I haven't heard any response about maths so far. So for the schools, if you want students to be prepared from foundation, come to us. Tell us what to do. Because we, we, we no longer rebel, we will just do what you want us to do. <laughs> and I think with the delivery, we have been uh, up to date with things. We are training our staff to do online. Uh, last year we trialed uh, one of the chemistry courses. Uh, next year we are doing three more courses. So we have our plan for online um, delivery. Uh, I think we are put in coordination. You would have seen the spread out of students throughout the region. And there are schools you have to jump three islands, get to the end, get on a boat and go to the school. And it's not only one school, there are three schools like that. So when you hear I'm traveling to the region, I'm not going for holiday, I'm going to book for both writing. <laughs> so coordination, we have managed to do that. We have placed uh, staff in the five big campuses. So they, they are there to uh, provide face-to-face -face teaching in their teaching area. So we've got CFS office in Vanuatu, uh, Solomon, Kiribati, Tonga, and Samoa. Uh, and I'm glad that uh, the, uh, the head of accounting uh, is now <coughs> working with us to uh, firm up our delivery out in the region, and he's also funding. Uh, monitoring, uh, we are doing the monitoring now at this stage. We are happy with it, but, but 
so, so we haven't really uh, captured what we really want to do. Uh, counseling, uh, we find that we are getting into the counseling because we, we also found that students withdraw because they are not counseled properly. So our academic staff are really getting into it. The promotion, we are really good at it. They should see, shouldn't have seen it in our um, enrollment. What CFS is here to deliver institutional research. We feel that we have a lot of questions in our mind, but we cannot really answer for it in a quantitative way. So we would want uh, uh, DVC, uh, Professor Kelly, to help us out in that. 99% retention, that's our goal. We want to get to that. Work in progress. We're starting to strengthen faith place in the region. All courses are fully online. Staff fully upskilled. That is, if we are our turn around, our turnover is not high. At this stage, it's very high. 80% of schools to offer the CFS program, and the business plan is to pr franchise the program. Might give us some more money. Our vision for 2015: instead of the adequate preparation, we are going to do best preparation of students for university life. Excellence will be our standard. It will no longer be a goal. Thank you very much. When they come in, you, you wouldn't know that students are brought here, they don't go to the lecture room, they sit around there. And also they bring their different clothes, they change, they go for the matinee. We've done those, those things and we even call parents to come and discuss with us. So that's why I mentioned the social aspect of, of, of the first year experience. My question really was, what percentage of our, do you know what percentage of our first year no. No, no, that's why I was saying that what we haven't been able to do is the institutional research. Because I thought to myself... Because I thought to myself that the, the 100 level should be the first year experience. Yeah, it says that. I'm just saying that the first year experience should be the first year experience. Significant number of students come from uh, foundation no. into our uh, program. Um, basically, we have about 40% yeah. coming from foundation. And the others are coming from Form 7? Yes. Others are coming from elsewhere, not only Form 7. Uh, I, I just want to uh, respond very briefly to this first year experience. I thought coming to the foundation program is already a first year experience, you're coming to the university. You're doing one thing, and I think you've answered it very well. You gave another definition for first year experience. I would like to know.
that's the rewrite. It's their first year on campus. The next step is their first year and involves all of the academic and social. And in fact, if they're out there and all of those staff come to places that you're visiting by boat, um, then their first year experience is when they actually turn up here, visit it, or when they turn up here, campus there. And so we have to cover all of them. And you can order pre first year or whatever you want to do. We will cover all of that and not get caught up in. But it's really exposure and preparation to, to you know, preparing people for success. So, but tell me, do you have any, any sense at all of whether um, those who do foundation studies do better? When you've got 40%, I'm looking to do well. Uh, do you have a sense of being in business of whether they, um, whether they do better than the students who come in from Form 7 or elsewhere? You want me to respond to that? Um... Oh, Uh, I think we have been following that uh, very closely the performance of uh, foundation students against Form 7 or any other intake we have within the university. There has been a marked improvement, and I think the uh, performance now almost equals, almost equals Form 7 students, and they're, they're, they're pretty good now. And we've been following that if there was an issue with that. Other years we find consecutively that we don't we're not able to understand why there's no consistency.